Hi everyone, my name is Melanie and I'm from Audio Codes. I'd like to welcome you to the demonstration of the Audio Codes Routing Manager, also known as ARM. ARM is part of the Audio Codes One Voice Operation Center or OVOC. OVOC is a set of products and services that allow IT departments to manage easily Audio Codes VoIP devices during their entire life cycle. As I mentioned, today we're focusing on the ARM, so let's start with a brief overview. Audio Codes Routing Manager enables centralized control of all session routing decisions in one place. Through ARM's highly intuitive graphical user interface, system administrators are now able to design and modify their voice network topologies and call routing policies from a single location. Some other features include the ability to discover any Audio Codes network elements and their VoIP peers automatically and performing number manipulation and SIP header manipulation that are essential to routing. There's also the capability to connect with third-party SIP network elements such as SBCs, media gateways, and IP PBXs. You also have the ability to interact with the organization's user database, allowing the organization to incorporate the user attributes to the routing decision mechanism. Now let's get started with the demo. This demo is of a real and live application running in our QA environment and runs real traffic over several SBCs. This specific topology demonstrates and simulates a typical enterprise with multiple branches where each branch has its own SBC or gateway. We're going to cover three main functional aspects of ARM. Network, routing, and users. In this particular simulation, we have eight sites. The HQ in Israel, Paris, China, New York, New Jersey, Texas, Haifa, and Beersheba. Let's talk about ARM terminology. Each SBC or gateway is a node, showed in blue. IP PBXs and SIP trunks are VoIP peers, showed in gray. The link between the nodes to the IP PBXs and SIP trunks are called VoIP peer connections. The link between nodes are called connections. Connections are created and maintained by the ARM. This network view is the main ARM view which allows the operator to create and monitor the network. On the right, we can see the live dashboard that shows us the network summary with nodes, peer connections, and connection availability status. And below, we have three graphs showing the following information. Routing attempts, unsuccessful routes, total calls. What we see right now is the network functional component of ARM. In a single glance, you are able to see the entire network. Let's move to the routing part of the ARM by clicking on the routing tab. ARM allows operators to group routing rules into logical groups or entities for ease of use. On the left side, we see all the logical group rules that have already been configured. Here are three examples of routing rules. The first is the restricted calls group. In this group, we included all the routing rules with calls that are not allowed to be established. In the paid from Israel rule, we configured the following. Source, all the calls that will be originated from the Israel HQ, and Haifa nodes. Destination, with destination to the 1700 and 1900 prefix, which are premium call prefixes in Israel. Routing action, discard all the calls that match the criteria. ARM allows this task to be simple and easy to configure. All we did was specify the source of the calls, the destination of the calls, and action that is required by the ARM to perform. The next example is also a discard calls rule. However, this rule is applied to a group of users. In this user section, that will be explained later on, we have created a reception desk group that contains all the reception desk users in the company. The rule is, Source, all the calls that will be originated from the reception desk. Destination, all international destinations. Routing action, 
Discard all the calls matching to those criteria. The last example is a routing rule. Next, we'll have a look at the group called Calls to Europe. In this group, we have all the routing rules with a European destination. Let's click on the To France routing rule. We see here source. We have no source definition, which means that this rule will apply to all the originated calls. Destination, all the calls going to France. Routing action, first option, route the call via Paris node to orange SIP trunk and alternative route, route the call via Israel node to Bezik SIP trunk. The ARM routing mechanism simplifies and decouples the device layer from the network routing and policy layer. Now let's switch to the network view to test the new routing rule and see a visualization of the routing preferences. By clicking on a connection and choosing Test Route, I can run a routing test to any destination. In our case, we want to test the rule to Paris, so we will dial a phone number in France. Press Find Route and the arm will highlight the preferred route according to the predefined priority. We can see in the topology view that the call will be routed via the China node to the Paris node and then to the orange SIP trunk. On the right, we see the alternative routes path table that shows us the possible alternative routes. The second option is to route the call from the China node to the Israel HQ node and from there to the Paris node. This time, the chosen routing path is from the China node to the Israel HQ node via Bezik SIP trunk. The test call feature allows us to test any rule and policy that we have created in the ARM and immediately see the impact on the routing topology. Another powerful feature is number manipulations, which can be applied to source number, destination number, or both. The manipulation rules can be applied per action basis in routing rule. As you can see, it is very easy to apply. In the ARM, the manipulation rules are also very easy to compose. Here we have an example of the number manipulation capability. When the ARM operator defines a rule, the operator can immediately simulate it. We see how the 002345 number will be altered by the manipulation rule. Here is another example for normalization of local numbers to international standard. Again, I can test my manipulation before I apply it. As you can see, number manipulation is easy to apply, and with this testing capabilities, it mitigates an error-prone procedure. The third functional component is the identity or user management. Let's click on the Active Directory tab. The ARM can connect to the organization's Active Directory and you can see all the users in the directory. It can also support several Active Directories at once. Now, switching to the User tab, these are all the users that reside in the local ARM database. These users can be a combination of the Active Directories with any external imported users from a CVS file, for example. We can also run a search in order to find a specific user. Let's move to the Users Group tab. Here the ARM operator can create user groups from the existing ARM users. For example, we have seen that we had a routing rule where we wanted to drop the international calls from Reception Desk Users Group. Here is the group condition of Reception Desk User Group. It is a rule that combines all the users fitting to that criteria set. We can immediately test it by clicking Apply and see which users belong to this group. It's a simple and intuitive way to manage and create user groups. So far, we have covered ARM's network view and some of the routing and policy capabilities. Next, I'd like to present another one of ARM's unique features. ARM assists the network architect to create a VoIP network automatically by adding a new branch to an existing network. Let's assume that we have a new branch in Germany with an SBC installed and we want to add it to the network. First, we will go to the SBC Web Access, which is not part of the ARM, in order to configure the ARM IP address within the SBC. As you can see in the status field in the SBC, the SBC just connected to the ARM. Now we switch back to the ARM. We can see that the ARM detected the new SBC and positioned it in a random place. We reposition the SBC to the preferred location in the ARM topology map. We will also need to move the VoIP peers of the SBC to the preferred location. Now we need to configure the SBC connection in the ARM. We click on the SBC and choose Add Connection. Next, 
We just need to click and choose which SBC will be connected to the new SBC. We have a simple table that allows us to choose the routing interface and we click apply. This only takes a few seconds until the connection turns green, which means that the arm is already configured at both sides and tested the connectivity between this new branch in Germany and the SBC at headquarters. However, in order to introduce the SBC in a controlled manner, the Germany SBC is still blocked. We have to unblock the SBC and see that there's a green light within the SBC indicating that the SBC is now active and in service. As previously suggested, we will now make a test route to make sure that the arm is routing calls via the SBC as planned. We see the routing is done correctly along with the preferred route and the alternative route as well. Adding a new SBC to the network or making a connection change is incredibly simple. Time-consuming tasks such as adding a new PSTN or SIP trunk interconnection, adding a new branch office, or modifying individual users' calling privileges can be carried out simply and rapidly. Now that you have seen the demo, let's review the main benefits. The ARM saves time by accelerating network topology design and modification. It reduces costs through simplified operations and increases agility by enabling rapid reaction to changing network needs. We are confident that the Audio Codes Routing Manager provides an innovative solution that enables simplicity to complex networks. For more information on the ARM, please visit the Audio Codes website. Thanks for joining us.